Okay, uh, this is a heart crane poem called Ave Maria. Be with me, Louis de Saint Angel, now. Witness before the tides can rest away the word I bring. O oh, you who reigned my suit into the queen's great heart that doubtful day. For I have seen now what no perjured breath of clown nor sage can riddle or gainsay. To you too, Juan Perez, whose counsel fear it and greed adjourned, I bring you back, Jefe. Here, waves climb into dusk on gleaming mail. Invisible valves of the sea, locks, tendons, crested and creeping, troughing corridors that fall back, yawning to another plunge. Slowly, the sun's red caravel drops light. Once more behind us, it is morning there where our Indian emperors lie revealed. Yet lost all, oh, let this keel one instant yield. I thought of Genoa, and this truth now proved that made me exile in her streets, stood me more absolute than ever, biding the moon till dawn should clear that dim frontier first seen, the Chan's great continent. Then faith, not fear, nigh surged me witless, hearing the surf near, I wonder breathing, kept the watch. Saw the first palm chevron, the first lighted hill, and lowered, and they came out to us crying. The great white birds, O oh Madre Maria, still one of these thou grantest safe returning. Assure us through thy mantle's ageless blue, and record of more floating in a cask was tumbled from us under bare poles scudding, and later hurricanes may claim more pawn. For between two worlds, another harsh this third of water test the word. Lo, here bewilderment and mutiny heap whelming laughter. And shadow cuts sleep from the heart, almost as though the moors flung scimitar for on more than flesh to fathom in its fall. Yet under tempest lash and surfeitings, some inmost sob half heard dissuades the abyss, merges the wind in measure to the waves, series on series infinite till eyes starved wide on blackened tides of crete and close this turning round your hole this crescent ring sun cusped and zoned with modulated fire like pearls that whisper through the doge's hands yet no delirium of jewels o fernando take of that eastern shore this western sea yet yield thy gods thy virgins charity rush down the plentitude, and you shall see Isaiah counting famine on this lee. An herb, a stray branch among salty teeth, the jellied weeds that drag the shore. Perhaps tomorrow's moon will grant us salt's bar. Palos again, a land cleared of long war. Some angelus environs the cordage tree. Dark waters onward shake the dark prow free. O oh, thou who sleepest on thyself apart, like ocean athwart lanes of death and birth, and all the eddying breath between dost search cruelly with love, love thy parable of man, inquisitor, incognizable word of Eden and the enchained sepulchre. Into thy steep savannas burning blue, utter to loneliness the sail is true. Who grindest ore? And arguing the mast, subscribe as holocaust of ships, O thou within whose primal scan consummately the glistening sanctuaries of the Ganges swim. Who sent his greeting by the corpuscent, and Tenerife's garnet flamed it in a cloud, urging through night our passage to the Chen, Te Deo Laudamus, for thy teeming span. And of that amplitude that time explores, a needle in the sight suspended north, yielding by inference and discard, faith and true appointment from the hidden shoal, this disposition that thy night relates from moon to Saturn in one sapphire and wheel, the orbic wake of thy once whirling feet, Elohim, still I hear thy sounding heel. White toil of heaven's cordons, mustering in holy rings, all sails charged to the far, hushed, gleaming fields and pendant seething wheat of knowledge round thy brows unhooded now. The kindled crown acceded of the poles, beest by full sails meridians reel, thy purpose still one sure beyond desire, the sea's green crying towers a sway beyond and kingdoms naked in the trembling heart. Te Deo Laudamus, O thou hand of fire. That was Ave Maria, and it's part of The Bridge, which is 
uh, a long poem with many sections. That's the first section after, yeah, it's not the beginning. The intro is uh, To Brooklyn Bridge, um, which is uh, where he lived when, I think, when he wrote the whole thing um, in, in a community near the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, and this one is written from the perspective of Christopher Columbus and his first discovering uh, America. I mean, what his perceptions were on his journey to this country, the first time he came, to be more specific. Um, and, uh, you know, Crane just... He, he does it like nobody else can. It really is just uh, uh, in, it, absolutely incredible the, uh, the the way he the way he writes. Just just really just that that, that gift of just you know I'm not sure if it's divinely inspired or exactly what, but he he certainly felt it and he believed in what he was doing and. Uh, it it shows that that poem is is amazing. Will be <laughs> will be read long after I'm gone. That's for sure. It's uh, it's it's just damn great. At certain times, I want to read another poem, but of course it's uh too long. You know what? I could read it backwards because this one I actually know by heart. I'm not sure where it is, and I don't want to spend the time making this video searching online for something. So. Um, hold on one second, let me stretch because my back is aching. Ugh. All right, so to Brooklyn Bridge, and he's on the Brooklyn side, he's looking out over the bridge, and it's uh, around Christmas time, just for a little background. Starts in the early morning. Yeah. How many dawns chill from his rippling rest? The seagull's wings shall dip and pivot him, shedding white rings of tumult, building high over the chained bay waters liberty. Then, with inviolate curve, forsake our eyes, as apparitional as sails that cross some page of figures to be filed away, till elevators drop us from our day. I think of cinemas, panoramic slates, with multitudes bent towards some flashing scene, never disclosed, but hastened to again, foretold to other eyes on the same screen. And thee, across the harbor, silver-paced, as though the sun took step of thee, yet left some motion ever unspent in thy stride, implicitly thy freedom staying thee. Out of some subway scuttle, cell or loft, a bedlamite, Speeds to thy parapets, tilting their momently shrill shirt ballooning. A jest falls from the speechless caravan. Down wall from girder into street noon leaks. A ripped tooth of the sky's acetylene. All afternoon, the cloud flown derricks turn. Thy cables breathe the North Atlantic still. And obscure as that heaven of the Jews, thy guerdon. Accolade thou dost bestow. Of anonymity, time cannot raise. Vibrant reprieve and pardon thou dost show. O harp and altar of the fury fused, how could mere toil align thy choiring strings? Terrific threshold of the prophet's pledge, prayer of pariah, and the lover's cry. Again the traffic lights skim a swift unfractioned idiom, immaculate sigh of stars, beating thy path condense eternity, and we have seen night lifted in thine arms. Underneath thy shadow, by the pier, I waited. Only in darkness is thy shadow clear, the city's fiery parcels all undone. Already snow submerges an iron year. Oh, sleepless as the river under thee, vaulting the sea, the prairie's dreaming sod, unto us lowliest, sometimes sweep, descend, and of the curve ship lend a myth to God. Just 
just incredibly vivid. The, you know, the, the rhymes are, you know, like immaculate size of stars just keeps coming, you know? There's another poem he's got called The River, and it goes on for so long, but you're just like, my God, this guy can really just, just, just tear it out. Um... We're already doing, we just did both of those ones. So let's, that's when I know exactly where it is, so it won't take any time at all to find. All right, okay. So I'm gonna do two more poems, and these are both from, so I did them in out of order already, but now you know the to Brooklyn Bridge, which is the first one, and then Ave Maria is the second, the first one I did. Um, as soon as Ave Maria ends, this one starts, which is Powhatan's Daughter. And I'm not going to do it, I'm going to skip around a little bit, because um, I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to do the river. So, the harbor dawn, again, takes place in the pre-dawn, same place as the bridge. Insistently, through sleep, a tide of voices... They meet you listening midway in your dream. The long, tired sounds, fog-insulated noises, gongs and white surpluses, beshrouded wails, far strum of foghorns, signals dispersed in veils. And then a truck will lumber past the wharves as winch engines begin throbbing on some deck or a drunken stevedore's howl and thud below comes echoing alley upward through dim snow. And if they take away, take your sleep away sometimes, they give it back again. Soft sleeves of sound attend the darkling harbor. The pillowed bay, somewhere out there in blackness steam, spills into steam and wanders washed away flurried by keen fifings, eddied among distant, chiming buoys, adrift. The sky, cool, feathery fold, suspends, distills this wavering slumber. Slowly, immemorially the window, the half-covered chair, ask nothing but this sheath of pallid air. And you beside me, Blessed now will sirens sing to us, stealthily weave us into day. Serenely now, before day claims our eyes, your cool arms murmurously about me lay. While myriad snowy hands are clustering at the panes, your hands within my hands are deeds. My tongue upon your throat, singing arms close, eyes wide, undoubtful, dark. Drink the dawn. A forest shudders in your hair. The window goes blonde slowly. Frostily clears from Cyclopean towers across Manhattan waters. Two, three bright window eyes a glitter. Disc the sun released aloft with cold gulls hither. The fog leans one last moment on the sill under the mistletoe of dreams a star, as though to join us at some distant hill, turns in the waking west and goes to sleep. So the, you know, what I was saying before is that the, the alliteration, the, uh, you know, the, every device, every poetic device available, he is just cranking out at top velocity. This, this stuff is, is amazing. So bear with me. The beginning of this poem is kind of hard to understand. I don't, it's, it's like a series of advertisements, but it, um, it disappears pretty quickly. Um, first three stanzas of it, it's, um, I don't know, in the same way that that last one kind of felt like a dream at times, this one does too. So again, this is the river. Uh, it's the third poem in this section. We just skipped um, Van Winkle. So again, this is the river. 
Stick your patent name on a signboard, brother. All over, going west, young men, Tintex, Japalak, Certainteed, overall ads, and land sakes. Under the new playbill, ripped in the guaranteed corner. Seabert Williams, what? Minstrels, when you steal a chicken, just save me the wing. For if it isn't eerie, it ain't for miles around a Mazda, and the telegraphic night coming on Thomas A. Ediford, and whistling down the tracks, a headlight rushing with the sound. Can you imagine? While an express makes time like science, commerce, and the Holy Ghost, radio roars in every home, we have the North Pole, Wall Street, and virgin birth without stones, or wires, or even running brooks, connecting ears, and no more sermons, windows flashing roar, breathtaking as you like it, eh? So, the 20th century, so is the limited, roared by and left three men, still hungry on the tracks, ploddingly watching the taillights wizen and converge, slipping gym lidded and neatly out of sight. The last bear, shot drinking in the Dakotas, loped under the wires that span the mountain stream, keen instruments strung to a vast precision, bind town to town and dream to ticking dream. But so men take their liquor slow and count, though they'll confess no rosary nor clue, the river's minute by the far brook's year, under a world of whistles, wires, and steam, caboose-like, they go ruminating through Ohio, Indiana, blind baggage to Cheyenne tagging, maybe Kalamazoo, to times brendings, time, times rendings, times blendings they construe, as final reckonings of fire and snow, strange bird wit like the elemental gist, of unwalled winds they offer, singing low my old Kentucky home, and Casey Jones. Some sunny day, I heard a road gang chanting so, and afterwards, who had a cold size once said, Jesus, so I remember watermelon days, and sped high in a cloud of merriment, recalled, and when Aunt Sally Simpson smiled, he drawled, it was almost Louisiana long ago. There was no place like Boonville, though, buddy, once said, excising less burr from his vest for early trouting, then peering in the can, but I kept on the tracks, possessed, resigned. He trod the fire down pensively and grinned, spreading dry shingles of a beard. Behind my father's cannery works, I used to see rail squatters ranged in nomad raillery, the ancient men, wifeless or runaway, hobo trekkers that forever search, an empire wilderness of freight and rails. Each seemed a child, like me, on a loose perch, holding to childhood like some termless play. John Jacob Charlie hopping the slow freight, Memphis to Tallahassee, riding the rods, blind fists, nothing, Humpty Dumpty clods. Yet they touch something like a key, perhaps, from pole to pole across the hills. The states, they know a body under the wide rain. Youngsters with eyes like fajords, old reprobates with racetrack jargon, dotting immensity, they lurk across her, knowing her yonder breasts. Snow-silvered, sumac-stained, or smoky blue is past the valley sleepers, south or west, as I have trod the rumorous midnights, too, and past the circuit of the lamp's thin flame, O oh, nights that brought me to her body bare, have dreamed beyond the print that bound her name, trains sounding the long blizzards out. I heard wail into distances I knew were hers, papooses crying on the wind's long mane, screamed redskin dynasties that fled the brain, dead echoes but i knew her body there time like a serpent down her shoulder dark and space an eaglet's wing laid on her hair under the ozarks domed by iron mountain the old gods of the rain lie wrapped in pools where eyeless fish curvet a sunken fountain and redescend with corn from querulous crows such pilferings make up their timeless eatage propitiate them for their timber torn. Iron, iron, always the iron dealt cleavage. They doze now below axe and powder horn. And Pullman breakfasters glide glistening steel from tunnel into field. Iron strides the dew, straddles the hill, a dance of wheel on wheel. You have a half hour's wait at Siskiyou. Or stay the night and take the next train through. Southward near Cairo passing, you can see the Ohio merging born down Tennessee, and if it's summer in the sun's and dusk, maybe the breeze will lift the river's musk, as though the waters breathed that you might know, Memphis Johnny, Steamboat Bill, Missouri Joe, oh lean from the window, the train slows down, 
as though you touched hands with some ancient clown. A little while, gaze absently below, and hum deep river with them while they go. Yes, turn again, and sniff once more. Look, see, O oh, Sheriff Brakeman and authority. Hitch up your pants, and crunch another quid, for you too feed the river timelessly. And few evade full measure of their fate. Always they smile out eerily what they seem. I could believe he joked at Heaven's Gate. Dan Midland jolted from the cold break beam. Down, down, born pioneers in times despite grim tributaries to an ancient, ancient flow. They win no frontier by their wayward plight, but drift in stillness as from Jordan's bro. You will not hear it as the sea. Even stone is not more hushed by gravity, but slow as loth to take more tribute, sliding prone like one whose eyes were buried long ago. The river spreading flows and spends your dream. What are you lost within this tideless spell? You are your father's father and the stream, a liquid theme that floating niggers swell. Damp tonnage and alluvial march of days, night's turbid vascular and silted shale, and roots surrendered down of moraine clays, the Mississippi drinks the farthest dale. Aquarian passion under toad sunlight, the basalt surface drags a jungle grace. Acris and lynx bard in lengthening might, patience, and you shall reach the biding place. Over DeSoto's bones, the freighted floors throb past the city storied of three thrones. Down, two more turns the Mississippi pours, an on tall ironsides up from salt lagoons, and flows within itself, heaps itself free, all fades but one thin skyline round. Ahead, no embrace opens, but the stinging sea. The river lifts itself from its long bed, poised wholly on its stream, a mustard glow. Tortured with history, its one will flow. The passion spreads in wide tongues, choked and slow, meeting the Gulf Hosannas silently below. Okay, those were four poems from Hart Crane and four totally unique, different from everybody else, and just my God, what a what a what a talent, what a, what an incredibly you know a, a genius full of you know poetry that's got everything, just just beauty, love, destruction, pure tragedy, horror, it's you know <laughs> joy, you know there's. There's, there's, there's some la you know, there's, there's laughter to it at the beginning where it's just talking like all the kinds of advertisements, and he blends all this kind of modern lingo, you know, this uh, vernacular, you know, the names of the places, Kalamazoo, um, with just the, with his art, you know, this his gift to kind of deconstruct sound and put it together in ways that are just more and more stunning and beautiful. He's an uh, incredibly gifted, gifted writer. Uh, I don't know when this one was written. I would, I, I know he wrote in like the late 1920s. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's absolutely great. And some of those lines what was the one. Um, what's the one? They doze now below axe and powder horn. Like you, you. <laughs> I always see it's just like that's. Prince Hamlet, you know, like that, that kind of, uh, you know, a bitter, you know, um, beauty in the vernacular is just like, it's, it's a hundred percent that is a Shakespearean, you know, actor who does not ask you to watch, who irresistibly, you cannot look away because they are telling you exactly what it's like to be human, what, exactly what it's like to live and take air in this earth. And, uh, you know, certainly not sugarcoating anything. Um, you know, just as as true and uh, perfectly realized vision as as any artist could really hope to hope to create. Um, all right, I think that's uh, good enough for this brief video on Heart Crane. Um, yeah, enjoy. Take care. Good night.